A serial killer so charming, he made it onto a dating game show. This week we discuss the dating game killer, Rodney Alcala. Let's open the serial killer file. Rodney James Alcala was born August 23, 1943 in San Antonio, Texas. Originally named Rodrigo Jacques Alcala Bacher at birth, Rodney grew up in an unstable household. His father, Raul, abandoned the family, leaving his mother to support Rodney and his sisters. The permanent separation from his father left young Rodney with abandonment issues. Being the only male in the family brought on traumatic emotional distress that would eventually mold his aggressive and sadistic characteristics into adulthood. Eventually, his single mother yearned for a new life, and they all packed up and left for Los Angeles in 1955. At the age of 17, Rodney enrolled himself into the United States Army, where he served a position as a clerk. He would apply himself and serve until 1964 after he experienced what appeared to be a severe nervous breakdown. Once thoroughly evaluated, military psychiatrists diagnosed Rodney with antisocial personality disorder, a mental condition in which a person has a long-term pattern of manipulating, exploiting, or violating the rights of others. Due to his incompetency to properly serve with other members, Rodney was permitted to be medically discharged from his base that same year. Following the discharge, Rodney was accepted into UCLA School of Fine Arts and was able to graduate in 1968. Rodney considered himself to be a genius. His IQ hovered somewhere around 160, and he was a supreme narcissist. On September 25th, 1968, Rodney was driving when he spotted eight-year-old Tally Shapiro walking unaccompanied along a street sidewalk. Rodney pulled to the side and lured Tally into the vehicle by assuring her that he was not a stranger, but a family friend. A nearby motorist spotted the suspicious event and followed Rodney back to his apartment, immediately notifying LAPD of the kidnapping. It was nearly too late by the time police arrived at Rodney's apartment. When officers forced their way into the home, blood was found throughout the hallway, leading onto the kitchen floor. It was on the kitchen floor where they discovered the eight-year-old girl struggling to stay alive. Rodney had raped and attempted to murder the child with a 10-pound steel bar, but failed to complete the murder on time. Paramedics managed to save Tally's life, thankfully. However, police were unable to catch Rodney after he fled the apartment complex through a back door. Investigators were able to identify Rodney as their main suspect after locating his UCLA student ID card in his bedroom with a notable collection of photographed women he had taken pictures of. Though Tally managed to survive, the Shapiro family were destroyed distraught from their daughter's traumatic experience. As soon as she recovered in the hospital, the family left the United States and moved down to Mexico for protection. It was now the 1970s, a new time and a new chance for Rodney to become a new person. Slipping through the hands of law enforcement, Rodney fled to New York, where he took up the alias of John Berger. He went on to attend film school in NYU, where he became a student of well-known film director Roman Polanski. Rodney hid his inner demons from the public eye and was considered to be a harmless guy with good looks and a great attitude. His attempted murder placed Rodney under the FBI's most wanted list, causing many to be on the lookout for the rapist and kidnapper in many areas of the states. It would take police three years to apprehend and Rodney after two girls at a children's art camp recognized him from wanted posters. While Rodney worked as a camp counselor, he altered his alias to John Berger in hopes of hiding from police. Rodney was arrested and taken back to Los Angeles in August of 1971. Justice was in sight for the Shapiro family, however, luck seemed to be on Rodney's side. The Shapiro family refused to have their daughter testify in court during the trial. Since the family relocated to Mexico and there had been no other primary witnesses during the attack, prosecutors could not charge Rodney with rape and attempted murder. Rodney settled with a plea deal and was forced to plead guilty for a smaller charge of child molestation. All previous charges were dropped and Rodney was sentenced to one year to life and was paroled after 
34 months under the indeterminate sentencing program. It only took two months for Rodney to resurface after he was arrested for providing marijuana to a 13-year-old girl known as Julie J. Despite being a danger to society and having an alarming criminal record, Rodney managed to become a typesetter for the LA Times in 1977. Rodney had also made his way into the company during the national coverage of the Hillside Strangler murders. Rodney also considered himself a professional photographer, one who specialized in photographs of women and children. Mainly approaching women, Rodney would introduce himself as a freelance fashion photographer that needed images for projects. Dozens of vulnerable women and children he deemed harmless would fall into his trap. Many of these victims would follow Rodney for supposed photo shoots. Each person who agreed to have their pictures taken would unexpectedly fall off the face of the earth leaving friends and family confused and concerned. Rodney would gain popularity on television when he was featured on ABC's hit show, The Dating Game, in 1978. Out of all three contestants, Rodney was able to win over a date with Bachelorette Cheryl Bradshaw. However, Cheryl rejected Rodney backstage after stating that Rodney was too creepy. She could sense something was off about him. Missing persons reports continued to be filed all around Los Angeles. The 1970s were a peak time for Rodney. Rodney was back in police custody after one of his victims, Monique H., a 15-year-old girl, managed to escape the rape and beating she endured in 1979. Fortunately for Rodney, his mother was able to free him of his kidnapping and rape charges by paying his $10,000 bail. Luck wasn't in the hands of the next victim, however. On June 20th, 1979, Rodney approached 12-year-old Robin Samso and her best friend, Bridget Wilbert, at Huntington Beach in hopes of luring his next victim. A neighbor had noticed Rodney Rodney with both girls and immediately went over and asked if everything was okay, purposely hinting to Rodney that he was being monitored. In seconds, Rodney ran off with his camera, attempting to conceal his identity. Shaken by the incident, Robin used Bridget's bike to get back home in time for her ballet class. The view of Robin pedaling back home was the last sight that Bridget saw of her friend after Robin's body was found 12 days later in a remote location over 40 miles away from where she was last seen. With the help of Bridget, police were able to mock up a composite sketch that was broadcasted across Southern California leading to his arrest on July 24th. Police were able to uncover a storage locker rented by Rodney in Seattle, Washington, which linked him to the murder. The locker was full of Rodney's keepsakes. Included in his pile of photos were Robin's earrings that she had last worn the day she was at the beach. Rodney was sentenced to death for her murder. However, the jurors were improperly informed of his previous sex crimes, causing a second trial to occur in 1986. Rodney was once again convicted and sentenced to death, but it had been overturned by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Prior to his third trial in 2003, Orange County investigators were able to match Rodney's DNA to the rape and murder of two Los Angeles women. The locker belonging to Rodney was a treasure to investigators after they were able to locate earrings belonging to both women. Additional evidence in their investigation tied Rodney to not two, but four women. The 1977 murders of 18-year-old Jill Barkham and 27-year-old Georgia Wixted, as well as the 1979 murders of 33-year-old legal secretary Charlotte Lamb and 21-year-old Jill Parento. Police were able to reopen the cold cases of the four previous murders, realizing that each of the women followed the same pattern of rape and strangulation. Investigators were unable to determine whether or not Robin Samso was raped due to the fact that she was merely a set of discarded bones that had already been eaten by wildlife once discovered. Because of this new evidence, Rodney's third and final trial was pushed to February of 2010. During his trial, Rodney was so confident in his intelligence that he decided to represent himself legally, something that is never suggested. For five hours, Rodney played the roles of a witness and interrogator, asking himself questions in different voices and speaking in third person. For his closing argument, he played the song Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie, in which the protagonist in the song tells a psychiatrist that he was to kill. In less than two days, Rodney was convicted on 
all five counts of first-degree murder. During the 2010 trial, Tally Shapiro attended Rodney's sentencing. It came as a surprise, and while in Tally's presence, Rodney apologized to her, saying, I sincerely regret and apologize for my despicable actions that day. Tally was not moved by his words and later went on to say, I have trust and commitment issues. He apologized because he got caught. The fact that this guy is still alive is amazing. On March 30th, 2010, Rodney was sentenced to death for a third time. In 2013, he received an additional sentence of 25 years to life after pleading guilty to two homicides in New York in 1971 and 1977. After the announcement of Rodney's sentence, police released over 120 images taken from Rodney's storage locker of unidentified women. Approximately 900 additional photos could not be released to the public due to their sexually graphic nature. Huntington Beach and police in New York have released the 120 images in hopes of identifying people in the images. A few weeks into the investigation, approximately 21 women came forward to identify themselves. Around six families came to the police and stated that they recognized loved ones in the photos. Sadly, the women or children in Rodney's release photos have been missing and have never been located, suggesting that Rodney has murdered far more than people know. Rodney Alcala is currently 72 years old and is awaiting execution while incarcerated at San Quentin State Prison in California. To this day, police in California and New York continue to reach out to the public to solve some of the mysteries surrounding the 120 photos that are easily viewable online. The Orange County District Attorney's Office and Huntington Beach Police Department are asking for the public's help in identifying women and children featured in over 1,000 photographs found in the Seattle storage locker of serial killer Rodney James Alcala in 1979. Anyone with information regarding the identities of the women and children in these photographs are asked to contact Sergeant Smith or Detective Ellis at 714-536- 5947 with the Huntington Beach Police Department or Supervising District Attorney Investigator Ed Barakovich at 714-347 8492. Please see the description below for a link to view these images. That's all in this file. Before we go, I'd like to let you know that I started a podcast. Available on SoundCloud and iTunes, Shadowcast is a podcast all about dark topics ranging anywhere from mysteries to the paranormal to serial killers. Shadowcast goes live every Saturday, and if you love creepy content, you're sure to love this. All you need to do is go to soundcloud.com slash Rob Dyke, or you can go down into the description below and click the link there to tune in now on the device of your choosing. And don't forget to follow me so you don't miss an episode. Episode. Thanks for listening. And of course, be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next Sunday.